let's talk about our sun. Without it, we would not be able to survive at all, period. After all, it not only provides us with the light that we need as well as the light that plants need for photosynthesis, but it also gives us the warmth that we need to not be on a frozen world, because well, that would suck. And while we do have great depth of knowledge about the sun, we can always get something new, such as a picture that helps show our sun in a new light, ah, see what we did there? Allow us to show you the sun as you have never seen it. European probe snaps closest ever photo of our star. Number 5. The Probe The European sun-chasing spacecraft Solar Orbiter has snapped the closest images of the sun ever taken, revealing the finest details of our star's outer atmosphere, the corona. The images were taken on March 7th when Solar Orbiter was exactly halfway between Earth and the sun, at a distance of 46 million miles 75 million kilometers, from both bodies. One of the instruments turned on during this opportunity was the Extreme Ultraviolet Imager, which sees the universe in the highest energy part of the ultraviolet component of the electromagnetic spectrum. Due to Solar Orbiter's close proximity to the Sun, EUI had to take 25 individual shots to image the entire solar disk, the European Space Agency said in a statement. It took four hours for the EUI team to capture all the segments as each shot required a 10-minute period including the time needed to repoint the spacecraft, ESA said. And better images are coming soon. Since the spacecraft's launch in February of 2020, ground control teams have been gradually tightening Solar Orbiter's trajectory around the star at the center of our solar system. While the two previous perihelions, the points in the spacecraft's elliptical orbit closest to the Sun, took place at about half the Sun-Earth distance, 47.8 million miles or 77 million kilometers, Solar Orbiter is now heading for a much closer encounter. On March 26 at 7.50 a.m., the spacecraft will zoom past the Sun at a distance of only 30 million miles, about a third of the Sun-Earth distance, ESA Solar Orbiter Deputy Project Scientist Giannis Zuganelis said. Solar Orbiter's distance from the star will then start to increase again, but its future close passes will take it even closer just 26 million miles, 42 million kilometers away from the sun's surface. No other spacecraft equipped with a camera has ever gotten this close to the sun. NASA's Parker Solar Probe makes deeper dives toward the star up to a few million miles away, but due to the extremely high temperatures at those distances, the spacecraft can't carry a sun-facing camera. Number 4. More Images during the imaging campaign on March 7, Solar Orbiter operators also took images with the spacecraft spectral imaging of the coronal environment SPICE instrument, which revealed the temperature gradient throughout the Sun's atmosphere. The strange thermal behavior of the Sun's atmosphere is one of the star's greatest mysteries. Instead of getting colder with distance, the Sun's atmosphere is actually considerably hotter at higher altitudes. While the Sun's surface is only about 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit 5, degrees Celsius, the temperature of the outer atmosphere, the corona, soars to nearly 1.8 million degrees. The SPICE measurements revealed individual layers of the Sun's atmosphere, starting with the lowest layer, the chromosphere, at 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 10,000 degrees Celsius, all the way up to 1,130,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 630,000 degrees in Celsius in parts of the corona. In the images obtained by Solar Orbiter during its first close pass in June of 2020, scientists discovered miniature solar flares dubbed campfires. These campfires predicted by the recently deceased solar physicist Eugene Parker could explain this mysterious heating scientists believe. Number 3. The Formation of Our Sun Now that we're done talking about the new look at the Sun, let's learn about some of its history, okay? Long before our solar system was ever born, the universe was a big wasteland of nothing. Or at the very least, that's what we believe it was. Then, through one means or another, there was an event known as the Big Bang. This expansion of energy and matter spread throughout the universe, both known and unknown, and created a great many things. And when it didn't specifically create something, it left the building blocks to all things to be made. In regards to our solar system, that would be what is known as the Solar Nebula, or to break it down for you, a massive cloud of gases and matter and particles and molecules. But how does it go from a massive cloud to a bright ball of warmth and energy that we call the Sun? The answer to that is time, pressure, and a little bit of luck. 
Most scientists who believe in the solar nebula theory understand the concept of the cloud being there and then somehow starting to make the planets in the sun. But what many aren't sure about is the actual event that led to it folding in upon itself. What we do know, or at least can theorize, is that when this started to happen, when the solar nebula started to destabilize, it compressed upon itself. And when you have a massive thing of gas folding in on itself, things tend to get massive. And as the cloud began to compress, it also started spinning, until eventually there was a giant pancake disk spinning around in our solar system. Not exactly a sun, but a big step in getting there. In fact, most label this as a protostar. And when that happened, the sun was born, right? Not exactly. Because while it was a protostar, it was still a pancake. It's estimated that over the next 50 million years, the sun slowly gathered more mass and more energy from the cloud, likely due to its spinning nature and the gravity it was exuding. Eventually, once it got enough mass and energy, the process of nuclear fusion began in the sun, and that led it to being the big ball of light and fire that we call the sun. Number 2. Affecting the System But that's not the end of the story in regards to formation of our system. The sun has a mass of gravity to it, and that gravity started to reach out across the barren parts of the solar system and started to make things happen. Though as some have noted, it wasn't exactly a masterpiece of creation. Many speculate that when the sun got fully formed and its gravity loomed large, things just happened. This is one of the reasons why there are so many objects in our solar system, and why there are so many different kinds of planets. Some of the planets are gas giants because that's all they had to work with, or they had solid dense cores and the gases just run to that. And when they were big enough and such, regular matter like rocks and stuff couldn't stick to it. In contrast, planets like Earth, Mars, and others were able to go and be solid because of the matter that was around them. The gases of the nebula were still a part of them, but they were absorbed either into the ground or into the very atmosphere itself. As things formed, things slowly changed in how the solar system worked. Again, because of the star. Once objects were a true certain mass, they went into orbit around the sun. Other objects were launched into space or pulled closer to the sun and collided with other objects. Some think that this is what happened to the Earth that caused the moon to be formed in a roundabout way. But without the sun doing its thing, we wouldn't be here. Number 1. Our Star While the Earth may not be the center of the universe like many once claimed, the sun, our sun, is the center of our solar system, and everything goes the way it does in terms of orbit because of it. And as noted in the intro to our video, without the light and heat that our sun provides, we wouldn't be able to be on a lush planet like we have right now. So while some out there may question studying the sun, it might honestly be more of a question of why wouldn't we study the sun? I mean, after all, it's so vital to our livelihood, shouldn't we want it to be something we study and ensure that it's not going to do something untoward towards us? Plus, if we get insightful looks at the sun, isn't that for our benefit? Exactly. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at our sun and how we can now have the closest picture we've ever had of it? Do you feel as though this truly shines a light, pun intended, on how our sun actually looks? Did you notice something in this probe's picture that was really interesting? Let us know in the comments below and we will see you next time on the channel.